see. So my name is Olaf Wachendorf. Uh, I'm chairing the Purple West Working Group together with uh, Yevgeny uh, from Verizon and uh, Peter is our program manager. Um, we also have listed it over here. Um, and we want to give you a, a quick overview of um, the recent achievements and what the working group targets are, and also a bit of outlook and uh, into next year. So um, it has been discussed in the previous sessions as well, right? So our mission is uh, to develop an industry-maintained software platform um, that is closing, I mean, that is, let's say, addressing all the non-differentiating elements uh, in the different gateway stacks that we have seen, having one solid implementation that everyone can share and uh, build the differentiating features on top. And um, yes, focusing then on a mod modular architecture and then, our, then um, also to integrate with different SOCs underneath. So there's a regular working group meeting every Wednesday at 4 p.m. CET. And uh, I mean, a lot of you are already joining. We hope to see more of you going forward. That would be great. Um, let me see. So when we look at the achievements of the recent years, um, so this is a picture um, of 2021, early 2021, uh, with the different architecture blocks. And uh, I don't go on, it, it's this slide, I don't go into the details of every block because it's too small. Just want to show you how it evolved uh, to today's architecture. And I mean, just from the color coding, you can see that the number of purple blocks has significantly increased. Um, and I will hand over to Vincent to explain the, uh, on the next slide in more detail every, I mean, not every, but the most important blocks. Yeah. Hi, I'm Vincent Orley. I'm a project manager uh, for Soft Atom for Purple. And uh, I will spare you going into too much details, of course, <laughs> because we will have, uh, it will take too long. But here, uh, the main points of this architecture, as Mark uh, pointed out earlier, if we are really aiming for a modular native TR181 uh, data model. So for that, we have uh, four parts, I would say. So we have at the bottom, the low-level API. Then on top of it, we have uh, what we call vendor modules to adapt it to high-level API. On top of it, high-level API. And at the very top, we do have the value-added services that we can add through LCM. Um, the main point here is really being modular. We can uh, really have very small processes updated one by one talking to the bus, exchanging data over the bus. So, I think I won't go into further detail, but uh, really the, this is a key point because it will enable you to uh, update with the LCM agent any part of the data model, exchange with application over the bus in a standard fashion with TR181, which is really the main point of Purple OS enabling open, openness. Okay. Thanks, Vincent. So, I mean, that's for everyone not yet engaged in the Purple OS working group. So all that is, I mean, obviously discussed in more detail in the working group sessions and documented in the internal wiki. So, I mean, it's evolving. So certainly also documentation can still be improved. But I mean, all the details can be then uh, seen in our internal documentation as well. Right. Um, moving to the next slide, I would hand over to Peter for the... Um, CI and regression. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Olaf. So um, on the CI side, there was tremendous process in, uh, in the recent year. So um, last year in 2021, we did our first steps with uh, integrating the CD router testing appliance into our CI processes. And this was heavily extended this year. So um, step by step, we are trying to test purplers more and more thoroughly. Of course, it's a continuous process, and uh, there are some drawbacks from time to time, as usual. But I think we are in a way, way better position now. And as you can see on the picture, we are already at a very, very good stage, an important stage, since we now get the first PON-capable uh, hardware in the test bed. Of course, we also need to, be, we need to test PON. And uh, so the OLT you see on the picture, you can also see on the Max Linear booth. And this is the unit that's uh, gonna get integrated in our test bed. And here also a big thanks to Max Linear because the colleagues in Munich, they um, took the unit, they 
tested it, they pre-configured it. Um, I mean, we are not that familiar with PON in every detail, so it's really great to have a silicon vendor support here to really build a good and uh, reliable system. And as mentioned, uh, also by Frederick already, so the next challenges will be the movement to the carrier grade platforms. Um, I mean, that's why we need PON support in the CI testbed as well. But I think Olaf will tell more about that. Thank right. you. Thanks, Peter. Um, so, yeah, um, before we get to the next year's uh, um, challenges in ahead of us, um, quick um, update on all the demos. If you didn't see them yet, um, we were asked to give a quick overview of the demos that are related to the Purple Horse Working Group. Um, so we have seen, uh, or we can see over on the right or on your left hand side, uh, two demos on the LCM uh, side, right? So one is from Comscope that was also mentioned before, an LCM backend that manages the containers being installed on the gateway platforms, and a similar demo from uh, Soft at Home um, that we also have here on the on the side. Um, Please take a look if you didn't see them yet. That's, uh, that was, I mean, one big area in Purple uh, Foundation overall, right? And in Purple OS to integrate these features. And then uh, we also show, I mean, a, it's a prototype of our new web UI. Um, it's not yet uh, yeah, showing and, and allowing to configure all the different features, but it's, uh, it's based on uh, Ember.js uh, JavaScript framework that's well maintained. It's easy to extend, and uh, if you look at the amount of time that we have spent on it so far, it's, it's not that much, and uh, you can see already that we can access all the different data objects via the REST API, can display them and uh, configure them. So that one, I mean, allows, I mean, it's, it's maybe it's not supposed to be a directly deployable web UI, right? Because operators at the end would anyway customize the web UI to their brand. But I mean, it should allow the Purple Foundation to develop, right? Every Purple member have something to start with and explore, explore from there. Um, so you can take a look at the, at the prototype over there as well. And uh, last but not least, oh, that's not the last slide deck. Uh, so it uh, was supposed to show a different picture. Um, as you can see over there as well, the PON demo with uh, uh, MaxLinear XGS PON running at full speed, as well as uh, the lifecycle management over there. Um, so that was uh, just summarizing the demo objectives uh, that we set ourselves for this year. And um, yeah, coming to the outlook of uh, key challenges for next year. So first big target for us as a working group is to move to a newer version of OpenWRT. So at the moment we are based on 1907. Um, so going forward next year, I mean, it's already in preparation. Uh, the next big step would be OpenWRT 2203. Uh, moving also to the latest, uh, I mean, not, not the latest anymore, but 5.15, a decent uh, kernel with, with uh, many new important features for us. Um, so that hopefully can happen early Q1 next year that we have uh, something stable on that end. Um, then was mentioned before already on several slides, um, we will go towards the next generation carrier grade reference hardware. I mean, that's also not the latest slide, I think. <laughs> um, so that's Max Linear Open Service Platform, as you can see over there already. Um, we've seen WNC, I think, uh, on the demo as well coming up, and Kaon, I think we also have a demo over here, so we will closer integrate them uh, and uh, into the Purple OS and uh, CI. I mean, some of the details still need to be aligned on that end, but um, that's the target, to have a broader representation of uh, newer platforms. And um, yeah, I think we have mentioned it before, right? So a lot of new features came in this year. Um, so the big step is really see the, the deployments happening in, in the next year as operator targets have been uh, shared before. So there's uh, still a lot of uh, portability and stability testing and uh, fine tuning to be done. Also security, security hardening, um, as well as CI extensions uh, to cover more in the CI. And uh, another big dependency for, for the working group is as well um, the dependency on uh, certification, right? So the more we can really um, run already self-certification on the low-level APIs, then, I mean, the chipset vendor can say, okay, that test is done, right? So that makes the integration of the upper layer software much easier and we can, uh, I mean, a number of issues that, I mean, did we implement this API correctly as a behavior as it was intended? 
So a lot of these things uh, that you otherwise uh, just see a failing test and you have to analyze um, could be taken away. So we look forward to hearing from Tim also on the um, certification activities. Okay, and with that, um, thanks a lot for listening.